Our brain is a complex organ, it produces electrical impulses which control our movement, thoughts, and even memories. These electrical impulses are transmitted by neurons, a network of cells that are found in the brain and throughout the body. Neurons transmit an electrical impulse and send messages to nearby neurons and the rest of the body using neurotransmitters, a kind of chemical messenger. Now, what happens when this rhythmic impulse does not follow its rhythmic pattern? There will be a series of electrical impulses generated in the brain without any coordination with one another, inducing a seizure. Multiple mechanisms can produce seizures, and they often appear to have no common thread. Seizures, on the other hand, occur when mechanisms that typically maintain a balance of excitation and inhibition fail. As a result, there are typically safeguards in place to prevent neurons from generating too many action potentials, but there are also mechanisms in place to stimulate neuronal firing so that the nervous system can work properly. Seizures can be caused by disrupting or encouraging systems that limit firing or facilitate excitement. At its most basic, the nervous system is a function of its ionic milieu, the chemical and electrical gradients that provide the environment for electrical activity. As a result, some of the most easily recognized excitability controls are the ways the nervous system maintains the ionic environment. The electrical basis of resting membrane potential is one example. Given that action potential generation is necessary to CNS function, the resting potential is regulated usually such that neurons are not constantly firing but are close enough to the threshold that they can discharge. Controlling resting potential becomes crucial in order to avoid the excessive discharge that is commonly linked with seizures. A neuron normally has a high potassium concentration, as well as a high extracellular sodium concentration and other ions, resulting in a net transmembrane potential of minus 60 mV. If the balance is upset, for example, if potassium levels rise in the extracellular space, this can cause depolarization which can lead to abnormal activity in a variety of ways, terminals may depolarize, resulting in transmitter release, and neurons may depolarize, resulting in action potential discharge. Pumps, such as the sodium-potassium ATPase, are present in the plasma membrane to maintain chemical and electrical gradients, increasing the possibility that a malfunction in these pumps could induce seizures. The sodium-potassium pump is very interesting because it does not develop in the rodent until several days after birth, and this may contribute to the greater risk of seizures in early life. Seizure generation in the normal brain contains multiple potential causes, which is not surprising given the CNS's numerous processes for balancing excitation and inhibition. It appears plausible to believe that in TLE, alterations in the CNS generate a context of heightened excitability, which is then superimposed by intermittent recurring seizures. One may argue that the mechanisms that cause the altered state of excitability are similar to those that cause normal growth and plasticity, which are required for limbic system function. Thus, the mechanisms that allow the CNS to evolve into a complex structure, as well as the mechanisms that give plasticity, which is crucial to its ability to operate in a changing environment, are not without danger, the risk of epileptogenesis. Although many of these difficulties remain unanswered, significant progress has been made in recent years, owing largely to the interaction of clinical and basic research in epilepsy. Thank you for watching. To learn more about recent development in medicine and updates regularly, please subscribe and support us. Thank you.